Hey there, Robin Johnson. Welcome to the show. How the hell are you? I am so excited to be here, and I'm, I love getting to share from my nerdy wisdom of being on Amazon way too long, and so I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here, and this is a topic we have not in 262 episodes discussed on the show, Amazon Shop. So I'm super, super stoked to dig in with you, and because you know everything there is to know about Amazon Shops, right? And um, speaking of nerdy, you're a fellow Star Wars nerd in the green room. We were talking about that. So I uh, love that very much. Welcome, welcome. I already feel like we're best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's dive in. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, who you help, what you do, and uh, we'll we'll see how Amazon Shops can help our audience. Yeah, so I actually started my business because I was a youth minister and I loved what I did, but I couldn't make ends meet. Uh, you know, they say when you work for a church, the benefits are out of this world because the pay is not. Uh, and I, so I started, I took $100 and it felt like a million dollars. And I started buying things at garage sales and reselling them on Craigslist and then eBay and then Amazon. In about three years, I had turned that $100 into a million dollar business. And we uh, started, you know, we were buying things. At, at one point, I was even buying things at Disneyland and reselling them. Uh, don't tell Disney. Shh. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> if you're from Disney, I don't do that. I, I've performed. Um, but then we started buying things wholesale. And we realized that Amazon was a really big, big problem problem for brands. And so uh, what we did is we, we we started an agency about six years ago. So I had, I had been coaching a lot of high volume Amazon sellers. Uh, but now we work with companies that, you know, some, you know, very small pre-launch, you know, um, some, we do like everything from home goods to groceries uh, and uh, up to publicly traded companies. So companies that are very large, that have a big presence, a lot of companies that are in you know, Costco, Walmart, uh, Home Depot, all of that good stuff. So uh, it's been, a really, really fun ride. Okay, so most of my audience are on the smaller business size, right? We have a lot of firms that are in the multi-million dollar range, but most of them I would say are comfortably in that million to maybe just, just approaching a million or maybe a little bit over. And they have already dabbled in affiliate marketing. They're dabbling in um, uh, maybe a side door or selling some product through their website directly. Tell me how Amazon shops would benefit interior designers or how it differs from a couple of those things that I, I mentioned. So, you know, if it's, I think, especially if somebody develops a personal brand, then, you know, it, and they have a following. So maybe you've been working really hard to kind of help develop that personal brand. One, you can use Amazon as a place to self-publish. Uh, and that can be a great place, especially if you're trying to get exposure into certain markets. You can use that self-publishing as a kind of a, a way, like, see, I'm a published author. Now I, I can come be on your show. And it can come get, get you a place to get on stages. Uh, so it can really help with credibility, especially in helping you get some more warm leads. So uh, don't don't uh, kind of shortchange the power of uh, Kindle, uh, the Kindle program, and you you can actually print physical books. And um, you know when I printed my, when I did my first book, what I would do when I spoke was I would print a copy of the book for everybody at the conference. And so because people will throw a business card away, but they won't throw a book away for the most part. Uh, and it only cost me like three or four dollars to have a book print at the time. Uh, and so it, it gave me them something memorable. It created me as an authority figure. Really did help. You have a, a following, then you can also start to create some of your own branded products. You might have found that found that you uh, are, you know, you, sh you, you use the same piece over and over again, and you might be able to contact that brand and say, well, let me, you know, can I do a white labeled version of this? And then you could sell that as part of your personal brand. Um, so there are a lot of companies that are very open to that. Um, and then also, you can also look at it as a great place to be if you're looking for uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, a brand that's trying to find influencers, looking at brands that maybe already are active on Amazon, maybe they're doing things like posts and stuff like that. If you're different, they're doing posts on Amazon, they're doing social media, they're probably interested in some sort of uh, influencer. And I will talk, I talk to a lot of brands, and most of them are embarrassed to ask you, they're afraid, <laughs> they're, they're worried that they're going to burn you, they, they just don't want to have a bad impression. So I, I think that most of them would be delighted to have somebody say, I love my, I love your product, you have an influencer program, the worst they're going to say, is no, but oftentimes they're going to say yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's true. And and to be fair, there's a lot of spam that that uh, arrives in our interior designers' inboxes. Yes, myself and and my peers, my friends, my compatriots, uh, offering some really crappy influencer. <laughs> 
<laughs> product. Yes. So it's like, at first you're like, oh, wow. And then after a while you kind of catch on and you're like, Egh. yeah. So I understand that getting burnt. So I, 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 let's go back a little bit. I lo love the idea of the thought leadership, right? And the authority position in self-publishing on Amazon. And that isn't a direction that I thought we were going to go here, but I love it. I'm, I'm here for it as well as the shops. And what my good friend, Luann Nagara of A Well-Designed Business has done that really well. She has three books in self-published, uh, a bestseller on Amazon. I'm a co-author in the la latest one. Thank you, so go check that out. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that's a really good idea. So from an interior designer's standpoint or an architect's standpoint, um, to do a self-published book on there, would that be more, would you recommend that to be more of a, a decorate and design how-to, a biography kind of situation? What are we looking at there? So I would look at what is your ideal customer most interested in? So don't write what you think your colleagues would find most interesting because for, for and you're going to need to bring it down to like a level one or two. So most people, they, you know, you're, you're, you're operating in your design space at like a 10 or an eight or, you know, wherever you feel you are. Most people think when they bring it down to their customers, they need to bring it down to like a four or five. You really need to bring it down to the one because as you can see from the clutter behind my desk, like I'm not a designer, right? So the way that I compose things looks the way that I want it to be, but I don't know. It would look so much better if I just did X. So um, I think make, making sure, thinking about who your target customer is, what, you know, what made them, what kind of research did they do? So I would go to your best customers. The customers were like, man, if I could clone these people, I would be, I would be happier. I would be more profitable. And, you know, say, you know, can I buy you a cup of coffee or, you know, can we, can, can I just jump on a call with you? I want to know what kind of research did you do before you started to look for me? What things were, what questions were you trying to get answered? And then answer those questions. Uh, and I would also say, don't let, because somebody's thinking, well, I can't do that because I'm not a good writer. You can pay people to write for you. <laughs> so <laughs> there's Ooh, yeah, ghost writing. Yeah, no, and, and you know, it doesn't, and now I would not say, hey, a uh, random person on the internet, write me a book about interior design because it will be horrible. You know, don't do that. But what I usually do is I will outline, like I was going to put together a, a class on what I want to, what I want to share in the book. And then I just talk through it and record it. And there's some that will do, in, you can do interviews and they'll do it that way. Um, but if you're looking for a service that I've used in the past, uh, writersaccess.com, um, you can get great writers um, and you can you can use them for your blogs as well. Again, I don't recommend you just tell them to go write whatever, but you know, if you, you know, if you can give them an outline or give them say like, these are the resources I'd like you to pull from, here's my blogs. Can you take these blogs and recompose them into a book? Then you're gonna pay per word for that um, but for me that that's worthwhile and it's still my thoughts. And then I go back and edit it and put my voice in a little bit. I love that. We have a lot of listeners who are excellent bloggers who have a, who have a whole book in their blog. And I'm thinking of you, Jerry Cerruti, if you're listening to this, she's in Italy right now, but she is a brilliant writer. That would be a terrific idea to put that, her musings, her thoughts, her design, or for anyone out there doing that. We also have a lot of listeners who are B2B right? They're interior design coach, they're vendors, they're, they're ideal client are other interior designers. Are we still breaking that down in the same way? Ideal, ideal client kind of, okay. Yeah, because then your ideal client isn't going to be an end consumer. Your ideal client is going to be, you know, I'm somebody who, you know, somebody who's a designer, maybe they've had, maybe they've had 10 to 15 good contracts, but you know, enough to say like, I'm, I'm ready to go the next step, but they're, they're concerned. And I would, you know, kind of, you don't want to give them so you want to get, give them a good enough information where there's value in the book. Um, but I will tell you, I, I'm friends with many um, New York Times bestselling authors, and most of them don't make the bulk of their earnings off of their book. Right. So, you know, it's, it's going to be on the funnels that are on the back end of the book. So it's going to be things like, uh, you know, maybe you have something that, uh, you know, an advanced course. Uh, and, you know, so you're, you kind of have to look at what can I do in my book to get people to sign up for my email address, uh, email list as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe provide com things completely free as part of the book where they, they, you know, they join the link from the book, then they can get onto your email list. And from there you can work on pursuing them to get to know them better, to see if they're a good potential client for you. Yeah. So that's kind of a, a funnel 
a, yes. a part of the funnel, a lead magnet, lead gen. And even Luann Nagara, when she was on our show um, of a well-designed business who has the book on Amazon, she admitted the same. It's not She's not going to get rich off the book so much, but what it does is it helps to give her credibility and gravitas for speaking engagements for her for her podcast and as, as that bit of um, credibility as a thought leader. I love it. I love it very much. Is there a certain dollar amount or a level of place in business or a level of success you should be before you even consider doing that? Or can anyone just hop out the gate and, and get going with that? Whatever you do, the first one you do, you're going to be embarrassed about it. Um, you're not <laughs> like going to look back episode. in 10 years and be like, wow, that first book I wrote. Wow. <sighs> You're going to be like, wow, I knew nothing, nothing. What was I doing writing? So I, I think that you just need to know that that's going to be how you feel at some point, And that's okay. Um, but, you know, that if, if as long as you're not trying to, you know, if, if, as long as you're transparent with your journey, people, people will say, okay, well, that was an early work, right? And so, uh, but I think that you want to make sure you have something of value to say. Uh, but but don't think like, well, I need to change the whole industry. You know, look at when you're talking to your potential clients, is there something that you feel that you're answering over and over again? So think about your last consult calls and what are the questions that people ask over and over and over again that you can say, look, I, you know, you can answer this and say, I actually wrote about this in my book in more detail. Uh, and um, if somebody has a choice between going for somebody who's a published author uh, versus somebody who just has some pictures and portfolio, then I think that that's going to provide something also never ever read your reviews on amazon unless you really hate yourself <laughs> i mean like seriously people are me like middle school girls are like wow those reviewers are mean so uh don't <laughs> mean girl yes it, it, i mean think about what you can say but you're really not writing it to change the industry you're writing it to make sure that maybe the questions that people might have that are maybe but they're not ready for a consult can they get their questions answered that way so i would think that if you are published even if you're self-published on amazon your perceived value definitely goes up as far as what you can charge for client or or, or that kind of thing am i wrong or is that just me no i think that there is a you know most people because one most people don't realize how easy it is to publish a book on amazon but two it's easy compared to what it was you know we don't have to bust out the gutenheim you know it's, it's a lot easier than it was before but still <laughs> um getting a getting a getting a taking a doing the taking the time to write a book and be vulnerable being a vulnerable enough to put it out there into the world is something that most people will never do and so it does give you an advantage because you know it's it, it's something that so few will do okay i have a technique question for you so i've heard in the industry that uh, amazon there's a trick you to be like number one bestseller is to put your book out there for like pennies to get that volume out there to, so you can say number one bestseller before you start charging for it. Is that a technique? Does it work? So there is some, the, the, yes. so <laughs> let me explain that. I know that sounded like whale from Finding Nemo, but you know, <laughs> let me kind of explain my hesitation with that. So in general, we want to think, so when we type things into Google, Google wants us to learn more. You know, it th th looks at things like dwell time and, you know, how long did they stay on the site? You know, we, we need fresh content. Amazon doesn't care about that. Amazon says, what will you buy? It is the greediest little search engine out there. So Amazon search engine is incentivized to try to get you to click the add to cart button. So when they're trying to decide, Amazon's search engine is trying to decide what to put at the top of search. It looks at, for this keyword phrase, when you're clicking click typing something in for this phrase, what's the most likely product that's going to get a conversion? So in general, the more conversions you get, the more conversions you get on Amazon. So sometimes you do have to kind of prime the pump a little bit. Uh, you can do that with advertising. You can do that by sending your email link to purchase a product. So this is true for books and for non-books. Now, you can get a lot of conversions with like doing like a, a penny sale. However, discounted... Uh, it, it's not a long-term strategy. And let me tell you, you know, a lot of people think you need to sell 4 million copies to be a bestseller on Amazon. Holy if you cow. pick a subcategory, you know, so you're picking like, you know, women in design uh, and, you know, that's your subcategory, you might only need 20 sales in a day to be an Amazon bestseller. It doesn't take a lot. So, ah, so it's all relative. Yeah. So the smaller the category, the easier it is to be a, a bestseller in that category. So think about that as you're picking your, your category, make sure it's relevant, of course. Uh, and then, you know, this is the time to say, hey, look, house cleaning lady or uh, my mom's best friend that I helped move that one time, you know, you're going to buy my book. 
uh, and we're all going to buy my book on the same day so I can say I'm a bestseller. Um, you know, maintaining that over a period of time is a little bit harder. Um, but so yes, you can, you can do that. Um, but that's only going to get you to the top of search for one day. So you can do that, but it's not really sustainable. So what I would recommend more is just try to write a really good book, you know, have people naturally get reviews and you're not really trying to have customers find you necessarily. It's always great if people are, you know, typing in, if you can create a title and a book that's appealing enough to a niche audience mm -hmm. where it's, a, you know, a group of people that might discover you on Amazon. But remember, the reason you, most people write these books is to help with credibility. And the content of the book, if it's valuable and there's some takeaways and they build that relationship with you, they're, you're going to be top of mind moving forward with whatever services you have to offer, for sure. Is Amazon, does Amazon work in a similar way to Google with their SEO, their search engine optimization? Are they keyworded similarly, similarly when creating a title? Do you have to think about that? So yeah, keyword, the, the keywords in the title are very important. So Amazon is very keyword driven, um, but it's all about, it's more more about the root keywords. So you can do white chocolate fudge and then you would still show up for white fudge and white chocolate fudge. Okay. So you don't have to necessarily have them in every order. So you don't need to be like my book on designing, my my designing book for, but you know, you don't have to, don't have to repeat the same phrases in different orders. Uh, but you know, adding some keywords, making sure your, your title is keyword rich can help. And same thing for the description around your book, making sure you're really, and there's this little section to include keywords in that listing. Um, really think about the keywords that are going to bring you the best customers. Don't look for the thing that you think people are searching for the most, but think about each keyword as a door that customers can find you. And so which door is going to have customers behind it, but more importantly, have the most customers that are the like, have the most likelihood of buying from you. Love it. Thank you for that. I, I love all this information. I've actually been kicking around writing a book. So this, I was picking your brain on a personal level too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's, let's turn that over to shops. Um, so at what point, how large of a following does someone have to have, or how many items should someone have access to in order to even consider having a shop or putting products on Amazon? What does that even look like? I'm telling you, I don't know from this. You know, so you could, let, let's say that you decided that, you know, I you tend to use these same elements in a lot of my designs. So I'm going to purchase them wholesale. You could have as little as one, you, you could, you could list as little as one thing on, on, on Amazon. That's not a problem. Um, there are some brands that are more uh, particular about where they want their products sold. So make sure you, especially if it's an important brand for you, you don't want to do anything that would upset them. Um, but sometimes they're more than happy to have you do that. So, I, uh, but you, if you have product that you've created or you're reselling products, you know, as soon as you, you, you have basically have to sell at least uh, 40 items per month to break even on the, the $40 a month cost to be a professional seller. And then Amazon takes anywhere from eight to 20% of the total cost of the product. Most, most categories it's 15%. And then um, there's going to be, if you use Amazon where Amazon ships it for you, which is what I would recommend, um, then that's gonna be a, a fee based off the size and weight of the product, but it's probably gonna be cheaper than you shipping the product yourself. Uh, so uh, you, you kind of wanna think about those things. There are some storage fees. So we don't wanna oversend stuff into Amazon. It's not a storage locker. Uh, so, but, and there's a lot to learn about Amazon, but it can be a really great place if you can say, well, I can sell six of these a month and then I can, you know, I can, um, I can use the rest of my design elements that I'm working with clients, then it can help lower your costs overall and increase your margins, uh, especially because there can be such a big difference between wholesale and retail pricing. Yeah. So that was my next question. Can you put items in the store that you have purchased wholesale and you're making your own de whatever determined margins from them? Or do you have to go from Amazon's links and link to the store? Are you limited in any way? For the most part, you can list any product that you buy authentically through legitimate channels, you can list on Amazon. There are a lot of restrictions. So, you know, things, uh, you know, if you have a, a product that maybe has a safety or counterfeit issue concern, then sometimes they will gate those. The brand a lot of brands will send you things saying, please don't sell it on Amazon. We're trying to sell it on Amazon. We're trying to get good data. So, you know, you want to ask them if it's okay. But from Amazon's perspective, uh, as long as the good is authentic, you're more than welcome to sell it. And they would like you to sell it at the lowest price possible at all times. <laughs> 
but you can sell it. You can list it at any price that you want. You don't have to. Uh, but if you if Amazon feels the price is too high, then they might make it a little more difficult from customers to buy. Is there an advantage to having an Amazon store with these exact same products, my exact same white label line, Darla Powell Home on Amazon versus Darla Powell Home at DarlaPowell.com? What, what would, why would anyone go off their own website to do that? On your own website, you're going to get better margins. So you know, when you're driving traffic, it makes spent better sense to send it to your own website the majority of the time. However, uh, if I know that maybe I have a product that is in demand, so I've created something new that pe pe people are looking for. In fact, you, I have tools where I could actually go search Darla Powell on Amazon and see are people searching for your product already on Amazon? Because there are some people that only shop on Amazon and if they can't get it on Amazon, it doesn't exist. So they're gonna be buying competitors. So if you're trying to get some of access to some of those customers, Amazon does have like a ready-made base of buyers. So it can be a great place to test new products, to, uh, you know, uh, to kind of uh, look and see, uh, maybe a t a get, get some people who are already looking to purchase, but maybe don't feel comfortable purchasing from a Facebook ad or from a direct website. So there can be a lot of, a uh, lot of opportunities there as well. So they can help you grow your brand. Um, and because there's a, a level of trust already with Amazon, um, there might be buyers that might be hesitant to buy off other platforms that would be willing to buy on, on Amazon. Is a, a good idea to have them in both places on your website and Amazon? Is there any conflict there? Nope. I would recommend having both of them, um, you know, and then you drive your email sales and you drive any like Facebook traffic, any Google shopping feed stuff. Uh, I would drive that to your website. There are ads. If you wanted to drive ads on Amazon, there are some really, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we do is we help customers drive their products on Amazon. Um, but you can do that as well. Uh, you can do it without that on some products. Some products are very competitive. So you, in order to really sell, get your product launched on Amazon, you would really need to have uh, you have some ads in order to get it launched. And that's one thing that we, you know, that we help brands to look at is, is, is this worthwhile? Is, is there a potential for profitability? Or, mm -hmm. you know, right now, OXO's got this handled. We, you know, we don't need any more spatulas. We're good. <laughs> right. Is there any kind of tools for research as far as pricing to make sure that you're not pricing yourself out of Amazon and what if you have something for an interior design accessory or something you're selling it on your website at a certain margin but then you go over to Amazon you say oh gosh they can get it for 100 bucks less is it better just to kind of stay off of Amazon then and not have it in both places and how do we even begin to research that so if it's something like it's your spatula is a hundred dollars more and there's really nothing special about your spatula and you're not you know, you're not William Sonoma. So people, people will pay extra for a coach spatula, I'm sure, I'm because sure. it's coach, yeah. you know? Um, so unless you have some sort of prestige around your brand, which, which you might, uh, then if, if it's significantly lower, your product doesn't have any unique selling properties, then I would say, you know, not worth it on Amazon. If your product is a more luxury item, if it's better made, if it's got better packaging, if it's got a unique selling purpose, or you've got enough clout around your name that people specifically want your brand because it, they know it will work with X component or something along those lines, then it's still worth, worth another look on Amazon. So if you have something that's very unique or artistic or handcrafted or artisan or something, that, that could be something to consider. I mean, something that's irreplaceable or, or uh, something that can't be copied pretty easily, I would think, or... Yes. Yeah. And Amazon has, we have, they have a custom program. They have a handmade program. Uh, honestly, handmade can, you know, is a little rough. And so sometimes people are better off on Etsy, uh, but uh, you know, they, they have those options that are available, but anything where you've got like any intellectual property too. Uh, and if you know that people are knocking off your stuff, you want to be on Amazon uh, and you want to knock, you want to use the tools to get them off Amazon because they're stealing your customers and then they will become what customers come to expect and you will get taken out of the marketplace altogether. So be sure to be proactively defending things that you have intellectual property around. Amazon will support you in that. Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Is it, is it worth it to set up a, a legit store with markup versus just linking to Amazon stuff and getting your me meager five or 10% or whatever it is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So this is the thing that, um, especially as a business owner, you have to think about what does my yes cost me? You say yes to Amazon. What are you going to say no to? And 
if it's going to say no to a client that pays you $20,000 to say yes to maybe making a $2,000 on Amazon, that doesn't make sense. Right. So if you've got right now nothing but time and you've got a great product that really fits, then I think it would make sense. Or you've been developing a product line and you're really looking to expand that, it makes sense. Amazon is a wonderful place. I live there. I breathe there. It's wonderful. And it's got a lot of headaches. And so you might already have enough headaches and not enough Excedrin. So if that's the case, I would stick with your design-related headaches and not add the Amazon headaches on top of it unless you have a partner to help you with that. Yeah, I can tell you there's a lot of existing headaches already <laughs> <laughs> in the industry. I look, tell you what, but uh, hey, maybe someone's a glutton for punishment or, you know, if you have that special thing that is aligned just with you and your brand and, and you think you can do it, knock it out. Where do they start? What What are the first steps to set up their shop? Well, if you're so to sell a, a physical products on Amazon that outside of books, you're going to go to sellercentral.amazon.com and you're going to follow the prompts. They are going to ask for everything short of a blood sample. So <laughs> you'll know, mail a thing to your address. You have to do a video conference. You got to link a credit card to so they can charge your card. You got to you know so they will go through a whole rigmarole, uh, and then you can start l looking at. Uh, I would then I would start start at Seller University. They've got some YouTube Amazon Seller University. Make sure you're looking for the brand. Branded Amazon stuff, go through some of their trainings. Um, and, you know, there are lots of videos on YouTube, but a lot of them are older. So if you see an Amazon training that's over six months old, unless it's still up on the Amazon channel, I would assume that it's out of date and always cross reference to find something newer. Things just change really fast on Amazon. So the thing that worked a year ago could get you suspended today. Oh, wow. We don't want that. No papals, no suspensions. And if someone is out there and they have a great book in their head, what's the very first step they should take to accomplish that? So I think it's KDP, but let's just say, so go to Google and say, type in Amazon KDP or Kindle Direct Platform, uh, and then it will walk you through that. Uh, and then you can see the pricing. Um, you can do color books too. So you can include color pages if you wanted to use imagery. You cannot do hardcover. That's the only thing that for designers, I know the coffee table books aren't, you're not able to do that on. Amazon um, with their self-publishing right now. Um, so, but they, they have, they have, do have, you can, as an author, you can get one or two hard cup coffee covers, but uh, so, but the, you can, you can, you, the pricing differs depending on the color of the pages, the kind of paper you use and whether the color are black and white, how thick the page is, how, how big your book is, of course, is going to obviously have things, but uh, you'll get the specs for designing. And honestly, you can get somebody on Fiverr to help you design the cover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, just like you would like with your clients, the more over communicate with your, your, your designer, let them know what you like, what you don't like. So you don't have to go through 1400 revisions. I love it. Or you can just call Rizzoli and say, Hey, can you produce my coffee table? Book yes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, don't worry. Don't fret. All of this minutia and details and notes will be in the show notes at wingnutsocial.com slash podcast. Just look for this episode with Robin Johnson. Robin, is there anything that I've forgotten to ask you that you think uh, we need to tell the listeners before we get into the what up wingnut round? Um, when it comes to Amazon, um, first, if you really want to sell on Amazon, I read the 14 guiding principles of Amazon. It's just like a LinkedIn post that uh, talks about how it makes you understand better why Amazon sets the policies that it does. Uh, and then take the time to really research. Amazon, one of those guiding principles is that you, you can't say, I didn't know. They expect you to do your due diligence. So you need to actually have a plan. So if you need to get a cons consultation, if you need to talk to people, if you need to do some research, do that first because Amazon doesn't take, well, I didn't bother to take the time to research that very kindly. So make sure you do your due diligence before you really get started on Amazon. Make sure it's profitable for you to be on Amazon. Yeah, that's like I was a cop before I became an interior designer, before I became a marketing uh, agency owner, and ignorance was not a defense. Yes. <laughs> now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wing now I have to ask you, are you ready for the What Up Wingnut round? Sure. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? I want it to be full out. <laughs> I like it. Like, she played it full out. She didn't hold anything back for later. She just, she gave it everything they had. Like it, my, my kids for, to know that I gave them everything that I had of them for them and that I wanted them to have a life that was full out as well. Love it. You're stuck on a deserted island, but you can have your one favorite food forever. What's it going to be? Uh, well, you know, because this is, you know, I think that if I can just have like pizza, because then I can, I can find like the berries and I can change it up a little bit, you know, versus, you know, like chocolate chip cookies sound great for like four days and you're like, oh no. I cannot eat another darn cookie. 
berry pizza got it last but not least please recommend a book that has had an impact on you either personally or professionally so i read uh walt disney the triumph of an american imagination by neil gabler it is like 75 inches wide it's huge but what i love about it is you know, I if people think about Walt Disney as like the ultimate success story, like like the shining star on the hill. But most people don't realize he almost lost his company like three times. He almost went bankrupt. He failed here. He made this big mistake in the way he put his contract together here. And reading all of that made me say, oh, it's OK to fail. It's OK to make mistakes. And, you know, that's part of the process. And uh, it helped give m myself a little bit more grace as an entrepreneur and made it easier for me to play full out because I could see like even if I fall, if I can get back up, that's what's most important. I love it. And you're right. I don't think anyone has recommended that one yet. What was the title again? Uh, Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination by Neil G-A-B-L-E-R. Awesome. Robin Johnson, please tell us where we can go to find out more about you and your services and then we will call it a day. Yeah, if you're interested, you can go to marketplaceblueprint.com. And if you go to marketplaceblueprint.com forward slash show, if you have a listing that's already up on Amazon, um, you can, there's a, like a 20 page listing guide to kind of help you with that. And then I'll, if you, there's a place to sign up for a free audit where I can do like a, like a quick five minute video saying, this is what I think you could improve on your listing or like you've got it, you're an A plus student, you can sit in the front row. Uh, and uh, so we, we can help you to see if there's anything else we can do to help you improve your presence on Amazon. Awesome. In the front row. Do you remember that commercial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Robin Johnson. You're amazing. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And we are going to be talking about Amazon. We are going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Amazon shops.